the Kenya Private Sector Alliance has been engaging the government on key issues affecting the business environment across the country. The sixth edition of this focused on improving competitiveness and productivity of agriculture and manufacturing sectors. CNBC Africa's Christine Wendo reports. The sixth presidential table on increasing Kenya's competitiveness took a keen focus on SME and entrepreneurship development. This was discussed in a bid to raise SME jobs by 50% in the next 10 years, especially in the agricultural sector. We emphasized a lot on SMEs and we have agreed on an SME strategy which we want to, to, to work together with you to see how we can build these SMEs. This is the engine that will help us create the jobs that we need. So there was a, a big discussion around that, especially with a focus on the agricultural sector. We are going to implement the reports of the Coffee Task Force, which I believe, if fully implemented, will go a long way towards not only uh, um, adding value to coffee as a product, but also to improve the returns that our farmers get as well as give jobs to our young men and women especially in the rural areas. The recommendation of the coffee subsector task force are under implementation and the government will extend the initiative to other crops to support SMEs in the agricultural sector. That an agreement has been reached to extend the SGR to Naivasha and this will be complemented by the development of an industrial park along the corridor. The roads annuity program will commence with the signing of the first contract tomorrow, and the private sector was encouraged to leverage on opportunities created under this program. In the manufacturing space, the need to expedite the implementation of Buy Kenya, Build Kenya policies was stressed, necessitating tight deadlines. Cabinet to approve the draft national local content policy under the auspices of Buy Kenya, Build Kenya. The preference and reservation regulations being developed should embed local content. And it was agreed that the regulations be ready by the end of June this year. We resolve that the performance contracts guideline will be reviewed to incorporate local content that would enable the government to monitor and report on local content uptake. We set ourselves a deadline on some of the issues, especially the repetitive ones that keep coming, that keep coming at every session. And we, we gave ourselves a month and said that uh, the smaller team would meet again the first week of July, there's a short list of what we as government need to do. And we have committed ourselves to that one month deadline to, to, to perform. There was also areas that uh, the private sector itself also conceded that there are some things that they also need to do, especially this issue of uh, buy Kenya, build Kenya. As Kenya heads into an election year in 2017, the private sector has expressed concerns over high and disruptive political temperatures. Among the solutions being implemented by the businessmen include the fourth phase of the Mkenya Daima campaign to sensitize the citizenry on the importance of a peaceful electioneering period. Mkenya Daima is a program or a platform that has been inspired by the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, bringing together civil society bringing together religious bodies, bringing together we the private sector on a platform to say only one thing, that politics is too important to be left to politicians. I, I suppose you did not hear me. Politics is too important to be left to politicians. <laughs> Kenya is going into an election year. And what we in business seek, and what every citizen seeks, is predictable operating business environment. As we come closer to the election, there is need for all of us to understand and accept and to learn from our past mistakes and to ensure that we all do everything that we can to ensure that competition does not disrupt 
business activity does not disrupt our economy, does not disrupt the development agenda of the nation. And I made a personal commitment that I have always, and I have stated severally, been ready to engage on any issue. It is my duty, it is my responsibility to do so within the confines of the law, within the confines of the Constitution. Despite the challenges, the country has been on an upward trajectory following the implementations of the fifth presidential roundtable discussions. Kenya has improved in its business environment ranking, moving up 16 ranks to position 108 globally, the best ranking the country has had in the last five years. Our economy grew by 5.6% in 2015, and we agree with that. Um, in addition, Kenya's average value of consumer spending has risen by 67%, and FDI continues to grow at a rapid pace, bringing Kenya to the second highest recipient of FDI in, in Africa. FDI intelligence revealed that Kenya attracted 12.6% of the total FDI inflows to Africa in 2015. And furthermore, it also revealed that at city level, Nairobi attracted the highest amount of FDI, displacing Johannesburg, which has been holding the top position continentally. 